Hey guys, I'm back working on the Mustang again today. He had a little bit of an issue underneath the uh, trunk lip. I'm sorry, the trunk lid lip. It was uh, pretty rusty around where all the uh, seam sealer and stuff had set. And I guess where it started deteriorating, the water had kind of gathered up between it and the uh, gasket around the trunk. And it, sorry about that, guys. I hit the button. Uh, had messed this up and it rusted it out pretty bad so I took and cleaned it all up and uh, filled it with all metal so now once I get that sanded down hopefully that will be in a lot better shape uh, went around the whole car after I uh, glazed it sanded all the uh, glazing putty and stuff down addressed a few more little low spots where I hadn't gotten enough uh, putty on it everything's looking pretty flat now I'm going to uh, sand the last couple of little places where I'd had to add some putty to it, and I'm going to uh, reprime it in all areas. Uh, everything seemed to be working out pretty good. Coming along so far, like uh, the sign says, Tommy Shoe uh, still sanding. <laughs> sand, sand, more sand, sand again. Just like uh, Turbo Cobra, Gary, and Matt working on their Mustang. Uh, sand, sand some more. Uh, by the way, that. Uh, candy that you're doing that's a nice looking uh, color for that paint job it looks like it's going to be kind of difficult from uh, the problems that you had had with the striping and stuff you're a braver man than I am I'll tell you that it's going to take me a while before I feel confident enough where I can try and spray that stuff but uh, that second test panel you did really turned out nice that's going to be a good looking color on that car uh, I think it was uh, Faster Cat was talking about he didn't have a tripod he was using his uh, vice <laughs> Well, this is my redneck tripod. I built it out of a uh, uh, thing I found at the uh, the dumpster one day. I think, if I'm not mistaken, this holds flowers from for the graveyard or something. And a uh, part of a light fixture clamp with a bolt stuck in the top of it. Hey, you make what you got work, right? Uh, I didn't have the money to go buy a tripod at the time, and I got this one. Uh, I looked at getting one, and I thought, well, heck, why buy one when this works? Uh, I was also uh, looking at videos this morning with uh, Pastor Cat. I'm sorry, not that. Uh, Dan Electro, the, uh, sorry about that guy. Uh, sorry, putting you on the tripod. <laughs> but uh, he's working on a TR5, and I went to uh, his uh, page, and uh, actually uh, he's got a live cam going, and uh, watched him work a little while, and I uh, chatted with him for a while on there. And it's really neat to be able to do that because it's uh, it's almost like talking to you guys on the phone. Uh, you know, I type in something, he'd type back a response, and it was really interactive, and it was awesome. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn you guys off. I have to plug the camera in the battery lights blinking, so uh, I'll bring you back later. Talk to you later. See you. Hey, guys. Rick, Rick Fix, I saw your video last night where your paint job on the Porsche went bad on you. Buddy, we've all been there. Uh, this is my train wreck, one of the worst ones. Uh, this is the one I sent you the message about last night. I got this thing, and the guy wanted me to uh, paint it to match his truck. Well, that was back probably the second thing I painted. And on one side of it, they'd already done a little bit of body work. So as I went around this thing and uh, tried to do all the sanding and the body work and stuff, you can see it's a real dark... Uh, blue color. I did the body work. I primed everything in gray primer after I got done. And then when uh, I started putting that color on there, it looked like two different colors between the light gray primer and the dark blue color that was already on there because I didn't do a ground coat. I know better now. But I painted this thing and I used up an entire gallon of paint mixed two to one. So that made a gallon and a half. And it still didn't turn out. And then having to sand it all back and buy another gallon of paint out of my pocket and the reducer and repaint it. So <laughs> I'd actually kind of forgotten about this until the uh, in Rick's video last night. But buddy, uh, like I said in the message, we've all been there and you will get it fixed. Uh, just hang with it and don't let it get the better of you and you'll be, our, be there. Uh, something else I noticed too, hold on a second. Uh, I was watching uh, Ed the Kids video where he was uh, working on the front end the sheet metal and stuff around his grill surround and stuff and he was using a Dremel those work pretty good I've got some grinding stones and stuff that I use in mine
but what I like to use in that situation is a uh, die grinder with uh, a carbide bit or carbide burr in it. You can get them different sizes and they don't wear out and there's not a danger of them uh, cracking and blowing up on you like the uh, abrasive wheels are on the uh, Dremel. So in my opinion they're a little safer and you can get whatever profile you like to go in there. This one's pretty good size and it cuts real well but that's what I clean all of my welds and stuff up with after I'm working in the uh, wheel wells in my car and uh, tougher areas. I've also got one that's a little bit more blunt and uh, as long as you don't run these things real real high speed they seem to last for a while. They are carbides so they're not cheap but I've had this one for I don't know probably eight or ten years and uh, I'm sorry about that uh, and so far it's held well and it really throws the chunks of stuff out that's one thing I would recommend though if you do use one of these instead of just a uh, pair of safety glasses wear a full face shield uh, one of the clear ones like I do to uh, keep from spitting little pieces of metal all over you and it's not a bad idea afterward to uh, take an air compressor and blow the shavings and stuff off of you too but uh, in a lot of the areas that you were trying to get into Ed I think that this would have really worked real good down in those tight corners probably a little bit better than that uh, wheel so uh, and then I think you can get electric die grinders too if you don't have a, a good size air compressor or something so don't let that uh, throw you away but as you can see this is about the same size physically as a Dremel uh, and don't get me wrong I still use my Dremel for a lot of things and I've got some small stones kind of like what you sharpen chainsaws with they work real well with uh, stuff like that too but of course you can't get those real hot if the cement comes loose from the uh, stone that uh, holds it to the arbor in the center of it so but yeah, I've used the heck out of this thing, and it really comes in handy for stuff like that. Uh, I've not gotten a whole lot more done on the car. Uh, I've been going around it, uh, finding more spots, puttying. I did, however, uh, kind of go back on what I told you guys earlier. I'd gotten to a pretty good point on the rest of the car, and I thought, well, I might as well go ahead and get started on this. So I went around and got it all blocked out with uh, 320. And as you can see now, it's got the red measles. That's the only bad thing about these uh, front bumper covers, uh, the type of plastic they're made out of. Every little stone or any type of impact uh, puts a little divot or a crater or a chip in it. So, but the strange part is the part that's down real close to the ground, which is usually the worst, and this one is almost perfect. There's, there's a lot of things on this car that kind of make me wonder, you know, what had gone on with it. But then from about the bumper line up is uh, where all the little pits and everything was. Uh, also, I had one area over here on this fender when I got around to it. Of course, I've already got the uh, body filler sanded and got the putty over it now. and had a couple of real funky ripples or something like they had tried to uh, force the fender up tighter against this. And it had kind of a weird wrinkle in it. So I straightened it out as best I could and uh, put some uh, Rage Gold in it. Got it all sanded down. And then... Uh, put the uh, putty over it for little pinholes and stuff. I've had to go around it again. Everywhere I'm looking, uh, I'll sand it and find a uh, bunch of different spots. But uh, hopefully, I'm just about ready to uh, go into another coat of primer again. Uh, there's a little bit better view of the back end of it where I cut those tail light holes out. I got those things sanded down pretty well, the rear bumper covers. Pretty well sanded and got most of that stuff squared away. Uh, let's see. I've got the body pretty well straight. Uh, one more time around sanding. And hopefully uh, I'll have everything ready to go. Uh, let's see. There's something else I wanted to talk about too. Uh, Yeah, Rob, hopefully uh, you got your car painted, buddy, and everything worked out well. I hadn't seen a video from you yet, but hopefully everything is uh, going well for you. And uh, glad to see that everybody seems to be doing okay with uh, with the Garage Gang. Uh, if any of you guys haven't been to Dan Electro 88's channel, uh, he's the one doing a TR5. You might want to go by there and look. This guy is, is really top-notch as far as metal work and stuff goes. Uh, I mean, to me, he's uh, right up there with HPR and all of them. He's pulling this thing apart a piece at a time, and he's uh, going through and changing all the panels and stuff out that are rotten. So if you guys get a chance, you may want to go by there and just check him out. He's, uh, he's doing a real good job on the TR5. 
uh, I think that's about it for now. I uh, appreciate everybody watching the videos. Uh, Darren, I'm glad to see that you're making some progress on that uh, high-end day. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out what the deal was with that steel that they used while your pen spots and stuff wouldn't stick. That was kind of weird. But uh, with that, I'll uh, let you guys go and get back to signing on this car. Y'all have a great evening. See you later.